Hi everyone, John Maskell from JM Coastal here. Welcome to this video on installing Telemac, an open source software for simulating shallow water flows in both 2D and 3D, sediment transport, water quality, waves, and much more. There has never been a better time for learning new skills online in coding languages such as Python, or for something like developing coastal models in open source software. Although maybe I'm a bit biased for the latter one. Some of you may know that here at JM Coastal, we like to use the Mike software uh, by DHI for many of our coastal modeling studies. This is a great software package and solves most water modeling tasks uh, very easily straight out of the box. However, we also like to use open source codes. This can have the advantage of reducing license costs and also giving the user the ability to access the source code so they can develop their own modules for simulating a new physics that's not included in the model or for write, reading or writing different data files based on the user requirements. Based on my experience in academia and industry, one of the things that puts most people off using open source codes is the perception that they're very hard to install and get working on your computer. But I hope by following this video, you'll be able to get Telemark, which is a great open source uh, suite of solvers working on your computer and get it running within an hour. So if you're a Windows 10 user and you want to get Telemark working on your computer, then this is the video for you. Um, I've also got it working on my Linux machine, so I'll provide another video shortly on how to get it working on Linux as well. Um, so yeah, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is go to www.opentelemac.org. Now, to access the download area, you'll need an account. So if you haven't already got an account, pause this video, create one, and then go ahead and log in. I'm just going to go and log straight in. And then I'm going to go to the download area, which can be found in the top right tabs. So if you look in the first paragraph on downloading Telemac Masquerade, you'll see that there's a link in the first uh, sentence to the automatic Windows installer. So go ahead and click on that. And we're going to go scroll down and we're going to download the Windows automatic installer. So this is a, this is a great tool now. So you can not only download Telemac, but also the prerequisite files that you need and libraries such as Python and the Python libraries that you need, uh, the Fortran compiler, uh, the libraries for the parallel computing, and also a subversion control system so you can uh, access a particular version or the latest version of Telemac that you want from the repository. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the automatic installer. I'm going to read the license agreement and click the box to notify that accept the, the conditions outlined in the license agreement and click download. And now the, uh, the automatic installer should start to download. Uh, depending on your internet connection, this should take a few minutes. So pause the video and then come back to it uh, when it's installed. Okay, so now the installer has downloaded. So I'm gonna click on the file and open it up. And yeah, I'm going to allow this app to make changes to my device. So I'm going to click yes. And then just click next on the setup wizard and read the terms and conditions and the license agreement. And if you agree, click accept the agreement and then click next. And then here we can select the components. Uh, that we want to install. So the open Telemac Masquerade source code, that's default, and we can choose whether or not to install the prerequisite files, but uh, we are gonna install these files. So we click next. And now we click next, and it will go through the process of installing all the prerequisite files that you need on your PC. Okay, so here we can see the components um, 
that are available to be automatically installed. So we have Python 2.7 and the Python libraries that we need. We have the subversion client uh, for accessing the latest version of the Telemac source code from the repository or a particular version that you want. We have gfortran, which is the Fortran compiler to com compile the source code. And we have mpic2, which is the, the libraries uh, for running parallel uh, computing and the Metis libraries as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click next and next again. And now all the prerequisite files should hopefully be installed on your computer. Um, just keep clicking next. Um, so here's something to note. So the, the default um, path for the Telemac installation, including the prerequisite files. In this case, it's saying it's the C drive and then open Telemac dash masquerade. But if you don't have uh, admin permissions directly on the C drive, you might want to change this path to be in your area and your username where you have uh, admin rights on, the, on your particular PC. I'm going to go ahead and leave it just to go straight onto the C drive because I have admin rights to everything on this PC. Again, um, this is to install Python 2.7 and I'm going to let it install to the same folder on the C drive. So now the next part of the setup is to download Telemac Masquerade and all the source code. So I'm going to go ahead and click next, um, next again. Now it's just opening some Python files um, as it's trying to run Python, but actually Python is just opening as a text file at the moment rather than the uh, Python interpreter running it as code just due to the way it's set up on my Windows PC. Um, so I'm going to try and install version 7.0 using the version control and we can try and click next and you can see straight away that I've got a an error here so there's, there's a problem grabbing uh, this version of Telemac from the repository because SVN is not recognized as an internal or external command. So my machine doesn't actually recognize the subversion control for uh, pulling the, the uh, latest version or a version down from the Telemac repository. But that's not a problem. It may work on your PC. And if that's the case, uh, pause this video and wait for all the source code to download. Um, but if it doesn't work as well, that's not a problem because what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use the SVN to grab a version of Telemac that we specifically want anyway in the next part of this video. Okay, so again, it says there's been an error. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go and find the folder that was created in the C drive, open Telemac Masquerade. Again, this, may, this folder may be in your user area if that's where you decided to download it. And we're going to go into the folder and if you should see a folder already created called version 7.0. So if your SVN worked, you should see all the source code in there. Obviously mine didn't, so it's an empty folder, but that's not a problem. What we're going to do is we're going to create 
a new folder and we're going to call it version 8.0 revision 0 and this is the name of the version that we're going to grab from the repository um, it's the latest version and a stable version of the trunk and we're going to use SVN to download all the source code to this folder so I'm going to right click on the folder and SVN should have been installed on your PC um, so you should have access to it down in the menu here and we're going to do SVN checkout and we need to put in the URL of the repository uh, that we want to download. Uh, in this case, it's going to be http colon slash slash svn dot open telemac dot org slash svn slash open telemac slash tags slash version eight p zero r zero forward slash. Uh, you can copy the uh, the URL from the from below this video. And then we also need to define the checkout directory, which is the directory that we've just created in our open telemac mask array folder. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So in this uh, part, we need to add the public username and password to access the telemac repository. So again, the, the username and uh, password are below this video. So the username is ot svn public and the password is telemac one star okay so I must have got that wrong try again ot svn public Okay, and so Tortoise SVN will then download all the source code and and all the subfolders in in the trunk at um, at that URL that we provided. So this may take some time again, depending on your download speed. So pause the video and come back to it once everything is downloaded. After some time, you should see that the uh, download from the repository is completed um, for a particular revision. So we're going to click OK. And now where we, if we click on the folder, the subfolder that we created, version 8.0, revision 0, we should see a load of uh, folders, including one containing all the source code uh, for Telemark. So the next step that we want to do is we want to add the path uh, to the Fortran compiler to Python and also to the uh, parallel libraries to our environment variables on our PC. So if we search for control panel, go to control panel, go to system and security, system, go to advanced system settings. And then you should see a tab that says environment variables. So if we look under system variables, we should see a variable path. Let's click on that. And there, this is where we need to add in the, the path to the Fortran compiler, to the parallel libraries and binaries to Python and yeah, so our computer knows where to look when we call these executables or look for these libraries. So you can see on mine, uh, the paths are already there. So if you, if you go, um, go ahead and add the paths to your path uh, environment variable, um, just make sure that the path uh, to your Telemac, uh, where you downloaded Telemac is correct. So as I said before, mine is just straight on the C drive. Yours might be uh, user your name slash open telemac dash, ma dot, uh, dash mask array, and then these subfolders that you can see on the screen here. So pause the video, uh, look at the paths that I've got then here that point to first to the Fortran compiler you can see on the top, 
then to the binaries for the parallel uh, for the parallel processing, then to the libraries for the parallel processing, and also to the Python distribution. Okay. The next thing that we need to do is to create a configuration file for the version of Telemac we'd like to run and also a batch file so we can load this configuration uh, onto, our, onto our machine. So you should see under version 8.0 a subfolder called configs and inside this folder there are a load of templates for different configurations and also a template for a Windows bat batch file to load this configuration. But the quickest way to get started is going to be if you look at the links below this video, you should see download links for the config file and also for a batch file. So go ahead and download these by clicking on the links. So here we can see the configuration file on the Google Drive. So click download. So it, because uh, it's a config file and also the same with the batch file, your computer may say give you a warning, uh, but it's just a text file, so there's no problem. So we'll go back to YouTube below the video and now this time we're going to download the batch file. So there's no preview for this in Google Drive and we're going to click download. Okay, so that downloaded without a problem. So go to your download folder. Um, select both of these files and cut and now we're going to go to our folder with Telemac, go to version 8.0, go to configurations and put both of these files and paste both of the files into the into the config, configs folder. So the first thing that we're going to edit is the config file so just click on it, uh, right click and then click edit and it should open in notepad or wordpad or another text editor and the the main thing that we need to change are we need to give the correct route to your your dist where you downloaded telemac so in my case like i said before it's on the c drive at uh, open telemac dash masquerade in your case uh, it might be under your username uh, and with the same subfolder However, I can see that it's not correct in the in the version that I've downloaded because we need to add R0 because that's the name of the subfolder. And also I'm going to change the name of the version to revision zero. And the next steps that we need to do is add the correct paths uh, to the parallel computing executable and uh, the libraries. So again, if you look down below, you should see uh, the correct path to mpi-exec.exe. Again, that depends on, on the path where you have Telemac installed. So make sure you put the correct path there and also here to the libraries as well. So in my case, just on the C drive. Okay, so we're going to save the config file and close it. And now we're going to edit uh, the Windows batch file uh, that we downloaded uh, to load this these configurations. So here we see the Windows batch file, which uh, the one you've downloaded should be named pysource.windows win10 and then PLL for parallel. So right click, click edit, and then the batch file should open again in a text editor. So we can okay so it's uh, it's just giving me a warning because it's a batch file so it can make changes to your PC in this case loading the configuration file and again in this batch file we need to give the correct path to the version of Telemac we want to use. So in this case, version 8.0, revision 0. And then this sets the home directory. Uh, the rest of the directories in this file should then be fine because 
uh, the, the, the subfolders should be all in the right place if you've downloaded it as a standard setup and not moved anything around, which you shouldn't have done. So if that's all correct, we don't need to make any changes to this file. If you've made changes to change the location of your time version, just save the file and close the file. And that's the configuration file ready and also the batch file to load this configuration into Windows. Okay, now let's load the configuration file we've just created uh, onto our machine. So we need to open command prompt and we need to cd into the folder where our configuration uh, batch file is and also our configuration file. So in my case on the C drive, open Telemac Masquerade version 8.0 revision 0 uh, backslash tonfix. And then we can list the files in there and the batch file that uh, we edited and created was pysource.win10pll.bat and we need to run this batch file to load our configuration. Okay, so I've run the wrong file there. I've, I've run the template file by mistake. So let's try that again. PySource.Windows10, that's the correct one. And you should have no error message if that batch file runs correctly. So now we should have loaded our configuration file. So to test that we have loaded a configuration of Telemac or at least the one that we want, we need to go cd dot 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 go back and we need to go to scripts slash python 27 and then we're going to run the script config.py and that will detect what configuration that we have loaded. Um, so we write python and then config.py. So in this case it's an unknown revision um, but there is a version uh, there is a configuration loaded and you should see uh, the message my work is done at, at the end of the script running just to show that there's uh, no apparent errors in the configuration that we've loaded. Okay, so the next stage is to compile all the source code for this configuration that we've loaded. So staying in the Python 27 folder, we type Python. Uh, which is the Python interpreter and compile Telemac and then press enter and then your computer and the Fortran compiler should start to compile all the Telemac modules, all the separate Fortran files uh, in the source folder of this version. So depending on the speed of your PC and your compiler uh, this may take a while so it's time to go and grab a coffee and wait for this all to compile. After some time, uh, the version of Telemac uh, you wanted to compile should be compiled and you should see the uh, message my work is done in the command prompt to say that everything was successful. So now we have a fully compiled version of Telemac and all the different modules. So that means that we can now finally run an example uh, test case on our PC. Um, so the one we're going to run is the classic Malpasse dam breach scenario and we're going to run the fine grid version uh, in the examples folder that comes with a download of Telemac. So to run this test case we're going to stay in the Python scripts folder where we compiled the code from and we're going to type Python and then Telemac 2D .py, which is the Python file for running the 2D version of Telemac. And then we need to add the path to the file that controls the simulation. So the, cast, the, the .cast file, which you'll see in the examples folder. So that has the path to the grid and also the various different uh, setup, setup uh, options for running Telemac. So we're not going to go into too much detail about these now, we just want to check that Telemac is working on our PC and just run an example as standard. So to give the path, um, 
we're just going to type uh, dash dash backslash dash dash backslash examples and then telemac 2d examples and then malpasse and the setup file that we want is called t2d under slash malpasse and it's malpasse dash fine dot cas and we could just run uh, this test case like this but because we've installed the parallel version of telemac we also have a final option uh, to control the number of uh, cores that we want to run this on whether we want to split the domain uh, to, to carry out a parallel processing version of this run and to define the number of cores that we want to run on we have to type dash dash nc size equals and then the number of cores so um, you can put any number of cores up to the maximum number of cores on your PC. If you don't know how many cores your PC has, um, you need to go to control panel again. So we'll find control panel, go to system and security and system. And then you should see the basic information about your computer listed. So if you look under system, you can see on my PC, uh, under processor, I have an AMD Ryzen Threadripper, and that is a 32 core processor. So I have up to 32 cores available uh, to run this simulation on. Yours might say four or eight, or even just a dual core processor, and that's fine. You can run anything, you can run this simulation on anything from one to as many cores as you like. So I'm going to use the maximum number of cores and write 32 uh, under for NC size. And then we press enter to run the simulation. And this will take some time uh, depending on the number of cores available to you and uh, the speed of your, of your uh, processor. Okay, so in my case this run took 22 seconds. And if your run uh, completed correctly, you should, again, you should see the message, my work is done. And in the examples folder, you should see the binary results file. So we go to examples, telemac 2D, malpasse, and you should see the results file here, r2d underscore malpasse dash fine dot slf. So, at least now we have a working version of Telemac on our PC. We've carried out a simulation with one of the examples and it has produced a results file. So at least you know it's working on your system. And this is the first step towards running other examples and developing your own models. However, there's nothing really to look at here. Um, the quickest way to see the results from this simulation is to download and install the Blue Canoe software and open this results file in that software. And other ways are to write Python scripts uh, to plot the results. I'll be covering these aspects in further videos. However, for now, if you want to see a plot of the maximum elevations, a comparison of your model run uh, with the example to gauge readings of the water elevation, and also a runtime comparison between your machine and my machine for a given number of cores, we need to go back to the links below this video on YouTube and you should see links to download Python and data. So first let's click on the link to the Python code we need to download. So go ahead and download that. Once that's downloaded, open the folder in your download area, open the Python folder and inside you should see two Python files. Simply select both of these files, uh, you can cut them and then go to the C drive, to the area where you've installed Telemac version 8.0 revision 0, scripts, Python 27 and simply paste both these Python scripts uh, into this subfolder. Okay, so go back to the links underneath the YouTube video and now we're going to download the data folder. So this is just a zip folder containing two data files. So we download 
uh, this. Once that's downloaded, open the folder in your download area and copy the folder and we go to the Telemac folder where we've installed it, version 8.0, revision 0, examples, Telemac 2D, Malpasse, and we paste the folder uh, into this uh, subfolder in Malpasse. So you should have now have a subfolder in Malpasse called Malpasse Data. And if we click on that, we should see two CSV files. One contains the gauge data elevation and one contains the run times uh, from my machine for comparison. And now what we want to do is uh, run this example again, but using the Python scripts that we downloaded just so we can look at the comparison. So go back to your command prompt. Again, we should still be in the Python 27 folder and we simply write Python. But instead of writing telemac 2 dpy we this time we write malpasse 2 dpy Again, we need to point to the correct uh, cast file, which is in the examples folder, as we did before. So examples, telemac 2 d malpasse, tdoD underscore malpasse, and we change that to uh, dash find.cast. And again, we specify the number of cores, which is anything up to the number, maximum number of cores in your machine. I'm going to use 32 again. Press enter, and then we carry out the simulation again, but this time with uh, just some slightly altered Python scripts that are going to do some plotting for us, just so we can visualize our results a little bit more. Okay, so now we see a, a surface plot of the maximum elevation in each uh, triangular element for this run. And also you can see the uh, mesh plotted as well. And if we close the window for this, we can then see a bar chart uh, showing the maximum elevation simulated uh, from your example run. Uh, compared to the gauges in blue and also uh, to the results to my results that I run. If we close this window then we see a runtime comparison uh, for the number of cores on your computer for the equivalent number of cores on my computer. Okay so that's it for this example just to have it something a bit more visual so you can see how it runs on your PC. Uh, if you have access to a, a set like more than four cores, you should see that this, uh, this example speeds up almost linearly for a while as you increase the number of cores, but then quickly flattens out for this run. So that's it. Hopefully now you've got Telemac working on your PC. And this is just the beginning. You now have access to a whole suite of solvers for solving the shallow water equations, sediment transport, waves, water quality, and much more. We also hope to develop a course on modeling coastal flood risk and the offshore modeling part of this course, simulating the waves and the water heights will be using Telemac. So if you've already got it installed on your computer, then you're already off to a great head start with this course. Look out for more videos on mesh development and model development coming up in the future. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to take our free short online course on using Python in coastal science. Python is very much in demand as a coding language, and you may very well be asked in an interview for a PhD or a master's or a job interview if you've used Python before. And if you haven't, just by taking this short course, you can turn that no into a yes. There'll be a link to that course under this video. If you have any questions about this course or about this video, please get in touch at john.maskell at jmcoastal.co.uk. And yeah, that's it from me. Stay safe, stay healthy, and hopefully see you soon.